Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Trains Automation Destination, this is Trains. I hope you are doing well. So today we are going to talk about something interesting around AI. As you are aware, the field of AI is evolving day by day. So as the demand to utilize these AI tools is also on the rise. So nowadays, clients have started investing in AI tools and as a result, they are expecting us to bring some use cases where we can utilize these AI tools to boost the productivity. So one such use case that I am going to discuss today is how to understand a test automation framework using GitHub Copilot. Why it is important? Because when we join any new team as an automation QA, at that point of time, understanding the framework is very important. Because if you will have solid understanding of framework, only then we can start contributing towards the development of scripts or we can enhance the framework. Right? So it becomes important that we should have understanding of test automation framework. Though we will be given the KT, but with the help of GitHub Copilot, we can do some homework and we can understand the test automation framework by ourselves. Also, after having the KT sessions, we need to dive deep into it and understand the framework. So here we can utilize GitHub Copilot. So this particular session is going to help all those people, those who are struggling in understanding the test automation framework, especially people who are transitioning from manual to automation or people with less automation knowledge. So this is what this video is all about. So without further delay, let me jump onto the discussion, right? So when you start uh, with any new position, right, in a new uh, project domain, right? So at that point of time, how should we start understanding the framework? This is the question in our mind, right? So we have so many questions, right? So we should have understanding on what is the framework all about, right? What is the tech stack getting used so that we can install the prerequisite softwares? What are the libraries getting used like Selenium, Rest Assured? What is the folder structure? Uh, we have SRC main Java. If SRC main Java, then what exactly SRC main Java contains? What exactly SRC test Java contain? right? Where are the resources? What is the entry point of framework where we can start debugging, right? What are the features of framework? How to execute test cases in a different ways with the help of this particular framework? Where the reporting is getting generated? And at last, we can utilize GitHub Copilot to understand a specific feature. So in all these cases, we can utilize GitHub Copilot, right? So now let us try to understand a simple test automation framework with the help of GitHub Copilot. For that purpose, I'll be going to IntelliJ. So first thing that you should have is, you should have GitHub Copilot. So this is a sample test automation framework, which is based on BDE Cucumber, right? So what we will do is, we will click on this main menu, right? And click on settings. And then after you need to click on plugins, you need to add this particular Copilot plugin, right? In my case, it is already installed. That's why I'm able to see it under installed. In your case, you need to search it under marketplace. Then you need to install it. So you will see something like this, right? In my case, it is already installed. That's why you are seeing this particular checkbox. Once it is installed, you need to restart IntelliJ. Then after you will start seeing this particular GitHub Copilot icon, right? As soon as you will land on this particular GitHub Copilot for the first time, it will ask you to log in with your GitHub account. So you need to provide your GitHub login ID and it will redirect you to GitHub account and there you need to provide your credentials and as a result, your GitHub account will be linked with this particular GitHub Copilot. And now you are good to go. So in GitHub Copilot, we have three modes. Ask mode is similar to ChatGPT where we will give an input and it will give an output. At it is edit mod is about editing something so we will give a context of a particular file and it will be able to modify that particular file talking about agent it doesn't need any context right though we can provide but it doesn't need so this particular agent mode what it can do it can read the entire framework it can write something it can run something on the terminal as well so this is these are the features of agent mode so we are going to utilize agent mode to understand the test automation framework and this is the llm LLM stands for large language model. So I'm going to use plots on it. So for any AI tool, LLM is the core or the brain of any AI tool, right? So this is responsible for generating the output, right? So in this case, this is going to generate the output. And as a result, agent mode is going to act on this particular framework and will be able to read this particular framework, right? So now let us go one by one, right? So we need to provide this particular prompt, act as automation uh, QA and help me understand the framework overview, right? So this is what we will provide. Okay, so let us see what it will give. So 
So you see, it is reading pom.xml. Okay, so based on the project structure and configuration, let me provide an overview of this particular framework. Framework type, this is BDD, supports both UI and API. Key components, UI testing, API testing, test standard, reporting. So for reporting, extend report and jail test report and default test ng report. Talking about project structure, right? So these are the project structure, test execution, separate runners for UI and API. Additional features, JSON processing capability using JSON, right? So it is able to give the overall overview of this particular framework. Right. So this is how it is able to read the entire framework and able to generate the output. Right. Now let us ask it the tech stack of the project. Right. Could you please help me with tech stack of the project. Right. And let us see what it will give. So it is again going to read form.xml. So now it is giving core technologies, Java 11, Maven 3.1. Inside this testing frameworks, it is using Cucumber dependency, testing de test ng dependency, Selenium dependency. Rest assured, for reporting, they are using extent reports with this particular version. Chain test report also they are using and test ng default report. And then there is a FreeMaker 2.3.33, which is for something for chain tests. Nothing to worry about. Then there is a utility library where they are utilizing Lombok and Jackson DataBind. Right, build and CI CD, uh, Maven show far they are talking about. So we can execute through test uh, through Maven, right? So same can be utilized in CI CD. So project architecture, so it is able to give the project architecture as well, as well right? Now talking about different libraries, right? So though it has given, so we can still ask in case it doesn't provide. What are the different libraries used, right? And their purpose. So now it would be able to list down all the libraries getting used and then it would be able to tell what is the purpose. So this is Cucumber. The purpose is writing test scenarios in Gherkin, implementing step definition, supporting BDD approach, natural language test case writing, test ng with Cucumber. So here you can find more details on test ng with Cucumber. One moment. It is still working. That's why uh, scroll is not working. So test ng with Cucumber, right? Let me scroll it. Test execution framework, parallel text execution, test configuration looping. So we are using Cucumber with test ng, right? So test suite management and Selenium WebDriver for UI automation for interacting with browsers, screenshot capture, right? API testing library, we are using REST assured, API testing request building, right? Reporting library, extent report we are using, right? So likewise, we'll be able to understand what all, what all libraries are getting utilized. Next thing is folder structure. Could you please explain folder structure, right? Meaning whatever the questions you have in your mind, you can ask it. And it will be able to explain that by reading this particular framework. So now it is able to generate this particular outline, right? Meaning the overall framework. And so in SRC main Java and resources, we don't have anything. So it is able to fetch uh, SRC test Java as well. In Java, we have API models, pages, step devs, utils, right? So you don't need to create a diagram by yourself. So you can take help of it, right? So this is how you can utilize it, right? For output, uh, the report is API report.html is getting generated, UI report.html is getting generated, email.html, which is a chain test report, right? So likewise, you can understand all this, right? So it is talking about target as well, right? So this is how we can understand, right? So we can talk about the test layers as well in case you want to ask. Now, the main thing is when we start working on any test automation framework, we struggle in understanding the framework. So what is the entry point, right? Because we should be able to understand where exactly this particular framework starts from, right? So let us try to understand this particular thing as well. So I will analyze the framework's entry point, right? So it is reading API runner.xml, UI runner.xml, right? And it is going inside, meaning it is doing its work. And at last, it could be able to tell us what are the entry points. So for API, there is uh, this is the entry point, and you can navigate to SRC test. So if I'll expand SRC test resources and uh, features. API, right? So this is the booking.features, step definition, location also it told, 
right? This is the API test standard they said, right? So this is the API test standard location, API test standard, right? So that also it would have provided, right? In case it hasn't provided, you can specifically ask where exactly the API test standard. So it will be able to give you the exact location as well. So this is where the generate uh, reports are getting generated. So for UI also, this is UI test standard, right? So for, for this also, it is talking about the feature file step definition, right? The different tags, execution methods also it is talking about, right? So you can run by different modes, right? So this is how you can find out the uh, like entry point. So if, for example, if I ask, what is the location of API and UI run? So it will be able to give me the exact location. So you don't need to expand the folder one by one. Instead, it will automatically find it out and will be able to note it down here. So you see for uh, API runner, this is the location. So this is SRC test Java API runner and API test runner. For field test runner, there is API field runner, right? For UI, this is UI field runner, right? UI test runner and UI field runner, right? So this is how we can utilize this particular framework, right? Now we can talk about the features of framework. So please help me understand features of framework. Right. So now if we have implemented the uh, parallel execution, failed test execution, so it will be able to find all those things, right? So now it will tell us what all features it has, right? So it is reading booking API dot feature, right? Because we have uh, UI as well as API. So it is now talking about the features of API testing. It has complete CRUD operations. It is using data driven testing, request and response validation, JSON payload handling. Right, test execution fe features, right? So we have parallel testing, field test, t mechanism is also there. Cross browser testing capability is there. Environment specific configurations are there, right? So this is how we can utilize it, I mean. <clears throat> Similarly, we can ask it how to execute test cases. So this is how we can ask it how to execute test cases, right? So now you see that I will explain you different ways to execute the framework, right? So using Maven commands. So now, if you will notice somewhere here, it has started executing as well, right? Because it has, if you will notice, if I show you somewhere here, it is running in terminal, right? So now let me show you. Uh, so if if it, it would have run it properly, then uh, you can utilize these commands as well, right? So let me see whether it has run. For API test, let me explain always. Actually, it was running. It hasn't run. So let me explain always, right? For API, this is the way. For UI, this is the way, right? For only all test cases, we can utilize MB and clean test, I1 do D, uh, suit XML, and we can provide the test ng XML or whatever the XML file, right? So we can run by right clicking on the runner as well. So we have API runner XML and UI runner XML, right? So we can click on those as well, right? So this is UI runner XML, then we have test ng runner XML, right? So likewise, we can utilize these and we can run it, right? So this is how we can understand. Now we can ask it to run it as well. Could you please run UI test cases, right? So it can do this part as well, right? So let us see. So it is reading UI runner.xml, right? So now you see it has automatically entered this ambient clean test and now it is going to trigger right so this is how we can utilize though there would be some failure right that's why it is still working so what it will do is it will try to fix it as well right so let us not go into that but this is the capability of this particular github copilot right next thing is reporting so we can understand reporting as well could you please explain different type of reporting So it is saying extend report, which is located in output slash directory, right? Then ch chain test report, which is also under output slash chain test, right? So main report, where is the main report? Where are the screenshots, right? So test ng reports also it is talking about, which is show file report, right? So this is how we can find out the different reporting, right? Now, for example, if we want to understand UI Tessner, could you please help us understand UI test tunnel, right? In case we want to specifically understand a particular class, right? So now I'm going to ask it, could you please help me understand UI test tunnel, right? 
So if I show you somewhere, you will find UI runner and here you will find UI test runner, right? So it will read and it will try to explain us, right? So now this, these are the configurations, right? Let me explain UI test runner. So it is using Cucumber options. So feature file location. So if I show you side by side, right? So it is talking about feature file. This is feature file location. Lou is for the step definition. Then we have provided tag. This is, then this is plugin for reporting, right? Then uh, parallel execution feature extend. So it is extending abstract test and the Cucumber test, which enables parallel execution, right? So it is overriding scenarios method. And here we are providing parallel equal to true, which enables parallel execution, right? So you can read all these things. Test and handles the parallel execution mechanism, right? So Cucumber by default does not have the parallel execution. So we need to use a, either JUnit 5 or Test and to execute our test cases in parallel. That's why we are using par parallel execution with the help of test ng for reporting configuration also it is talking about right uh, so these all things failure management also it is talking about that we have failure management so if i'll show it here so we have rerun plugin that we are using for fail test cases right so it, it support test failure as well right so this is how we can utilize this particular github copilot to understand the test automation framework and it will make your life easy and it will help you do some homework before going into the KT sessions. And this is how you can utilize it. But yeah, make sure that it is allowed by your organization to use this particular GitHub Copilot and use the license version uh, provided by your organization. So this is what I wanted to go, guys, as part of current discussion. Thank you for watching. I would request you to please like, share and subscribe. Thank you once again.